so next we're on Centipede, who is a bit of a doozy. And honestly, probably if I'm going to lose points, it's going to be on him. This guy is just a mess and really hard to do right. So, in my critters, so game objects, critters, centipede folder, I have, so the parent class, which I use just to help keep some of the, like, more obvious values, just be available to everybody. Keeps my naming systems consistent. So head, body, each of their own factories and their own pools. And then the head, so the only unique thing that I did here, is the head is the one that calls the A, finite state machine, obviously. But then whenever he decides to change it, or whenever he, um, sorry, whenever he goes through one frame, he tells his next body, if it exists, to move one frame. And the body will then, if he has a child, will then pass his, will then pass move one next frame on him. So it's another recursive logic of the head calls the body. If the head has a body, he calls the next body. If the body has another body, he calls him. And they pass it on down the line. So the move finite state machine is fairly like textbook in the fact that it's what you told us to do. The only thing that's unique or weird is my move offsets, like arrays here. They are gross and really not great and not fully implemented. The Multiple move speeds and angular movement is not perfected in here, but I have most of the groundwork that I need to do it in here. I did not like the solution at all. It just became a sea of code, even when I removed all my magic numbers. All right, I'll go to example of the finite state machine. He has the three arrays that you saw before and with him. He goes through his normal code of like a move. Oh yeah, I call everything by frame. So each one of these guys in here, oops, sorry, in here is considered to be one movement frame. So like one, two, three, four, etc. And you send, just keep the same one across each call. It's a little wonky, but it seems to work in my mind. And then I have this guy right here. The last frame of animation will tell them like when you're done. So you keep going through here, and it just keeps passing himself on next date next state. It's not all too fancy. I did the same two for all of them. Yeah, they're all almost identical. It's just they have their offsets arrays and some code where they move things. And then I'll go back to the heads and bodies because I did interact with this. So you call, you create your float holder and then, which is essentially just how you get your float values out of him, and you set scale. Holder X, holder Y. I found it easier than just calling hold um, get twice. I'm not sure if it's performant, but it's there. And now, if you're saying if your integer holder is just an integer pair, I used to hold two ints instead of holding two floats. Um, if your integer x does not equal into their integer x, x and y in these cases are just your first and last animation. So basically, if it's if you're being told to change your animation, you reset your integer holder to be a different frame set of the animation and set your code to be that. These values were, you'll see before, back on the parent class, these guys, like the is animated, is animation looped, and integer holder and float holder. All of them have one. It's how they hold their identity. I'm trying to think of anything else special. Um, there's honestly nothing too special about these guys. Um, whenever you spawn a centipede chain, you actually spawn it from the head factory, who then will create the heads. Which is a little wonky, and I have this one exceptionally bad line, this uh, la this line right here. If you want to dock me for points, that's the line to dock me for. <laughs> He's gross. Basically, if you tell him to start with a bunch of bodies, he creates a bunch of bodies and hooks them into the chain. Oh yeah, if they die, so splitting. If they health becomes less than zero, which all of them only have one health, so it's kind of relevant, but I like to be defensive. You do the normal um, W linked list stuff of tell your previous to lose connection to you. If they are a body, you essentially lose connection with the front. Spawn a mushroom in front of me. And if you have a previous guy, you need to now spawn a new head and attach him back onto the string, onto the next little line. And then you do the normal spawn managers for all the pretty fun stuff. And then wave manager, one centipede beast died. This is how I track whether or not there's centipedes still on the field. 
and that is how I know when I should stop the audio, when I should go to the next level. It's all because this guy knows it. Oh, which goes back to Centipede Head Factory is the one who sets that number. Increment number of live centipede pieces by number of bodies plus one. So like the head plus the chain. I believe that's it. Oh yeah, integer pair is just, he's just basically struct, a very <laughs> lazy struct. <laughs> 